Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform multinomial logistic regression using Stata. Before we get started, let me note that underneath the video description, you will find a link to the Stata data file that I'm using in this video. And you'll also find a link to a PowerPoint that goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. So be sure to check it out. Okay, so our example is based on data from the Pew Research Center, and the data reflects participant responses to the Election News Pathways survey from March 2020. So in our data set, we have 1,071 cases that were uh, randomly sampled from the original data set uh, containing 8,914 cases. And in that original survey, uh, they asked questions regarding uh, individuals' perceptions of the COVID-19 crisis that we are currently facing. So I thought I would uh, analyze some data related to that since it's on everybody's mind at this point. So uh, in our demonstration, we are going to be examining predictors of respondents' per perceptions of the COVID-19 virus as a threat to their personal health. So the dependent variable COVID threat um, is actually uh, in our data set, uh, this variable right here, and it's coded zero uh, where COVID-19 is not believed to be a threat to personal health, uh, one, COVID-19 is a minor threat to personal health, and two, COVID-19 is a major threat to personal health. The predictors in our model include gender identification, so that's our female ID variable. So it's coded zero for uh, identified as male, one for identified as female. We have a predictor which is how much news and information concerning COVID-19 appears to be made up. So we have this COVID made up variable in our data set and it ranges from zero, not at all, to three, a lot. We have a variable that is a age category, so that's our age cat uh, variable here. It's coded zero for individuals falling between 18 and 29 years old, uh, one for individuals falling between 30 and 49 years old, two uh, for individuals falling between 50 and 64 years old, and then a code of three for individuals 65 plus. Finally, we have an education level variable in our data set, and it, uh, its values range from zero, uh, did not graduate high school, to five, being postgraduate. So for our demonstration, we're going to treat all variables, uh, except for the age cat uh, variable, as scale variables. And the age cat variable, we're going to treat it as a fixed factor in our model. Now, I want to mention that multinomial logistic regression generally is utilized when you have a nominal outcome variable, or uh, you could have an ordinal uh, outcome variable as well. Um, typically, uh, if, you ha if your dependent variable is ordinal, you might uh, opt to utilize the ordinal logistic regression approach. Uh, but that approach requires that the assumption of proportional odds is met. And so if that assumption is not met, then it makes uh, more sense to consider using multinomial logistic regression. So um, I, I actually have run uh, this analysis using ordinal logistic regression and tested the proportional odds assumption and found that assumption to be violated. So it makes uh, sense in, to uh, perform our analysis using uh, a standard multinomial logistic regression. Okay, so here we have our uh, Stata program opened up and let's just take a quick look at our data. I'm just going to go under data editor so you can see there's our COVID threat variable, our female ID variable, our age uh, category variable, education level, and then COVID made up uh, variable. So I'm going to start off by running the analysis using our drop down menus. Uh, so I'm going to click on statistics and then go down to categorical outcomes and then click on multinomial logistic regression. Next I'm going to select the dependent variable which is our COVID threat variable and then for the independent variables I'm going to select female ID, age cat, education level, and then COVID made up variables. And because I'm going to treat the age cat variable as a uh, factor in our analysis I'm going to uh, type use the I dot prefix and um, uh, when we're running our analysis. Now if I want to select a given uh, outcome variable as a base uh, outcome um, or a particular category as a base outcome then what I can do is select uh, options right here 
and uh, use the value for my dependent variable that I want to represent my base outcome. So for my analysis, I'm actually going to use the not a threat uh, category as my uh, base outcome or reference category. So that is actually coded 0 on the original variable. So I'm going to type 0 and then press OK and it runs my analysis for me right here. So you can see that uh, the not a threat uh, category for my dependent variable that is uh, reflecting the base or being uh, indicated as being the base outcome. Now if I want to run my analysis using uh, syntax I can go down to the command line and what I would do is I would use the mlogit command so mlogit and then I would type in um, the name of my dependent variable so my the name of my dependent variable uh, happened to be COVID threat then underscore ph uh, and then I'll space and then I'll add in the names of my independent variables and just to kind of expedite this and to make uh, this uh, make it less likely I commit an error I'm going to go over to uh, this section over here and just uh, highlight those variables and move them over uh, to the command line so I'm going to select female ID uh, age category uh, education level and then COVID made up so with the age cat variable, I'm going to again use my i dot prefix, and then following COVID made up, I'm going to type comma, and then I'll type in base outcome, and then inside parenthesis I'll type in a zero. So now when I run the analysis, you can see I get the same results that I had before. Okay, so at this time I'm going to refer back to my PowerPoint uh, in this walkthrough of interpretation of the output. Uh, I do want to mention that uh, when I just ran the analysis, uh, the ordering in terms of the variables, um, uh, the predictor variables in the model, um, are not the same as, that, as they are appearing here in this uh, screenshot. So just kind of keep in mind though that the values are exactly the same, but uh, I'm going to be proceeding from this particular um, uh, demonstration rather than from the state output uh, directly. So the first portion of our output that we're going to look at is a likelihood ratio chi-square test and this is comparing the fit of our model with the complete set of predictors with an intercept only or a null model basically. So if it's statistically significant you can infer that at least one of the population regression slopes is significantly different from zero. So based on our likelihood ratio uh, chi-square test we can say that the model containing the full set of predictors represents a significant improvement in fit relative to a null model so we can infer that at least one population slope is non-zero. Next I draw your attention to the pseudo r-square value that's given. Uh, this is McFadden pseudo r-square and this index is not computed in the same way as r-square and least squares regression so you cannot interpret it as a proportion of variance accounted for as you would in the context of least squares regression. Uh, nevertheless, you can still think of McFadden pseudo R square as an index of proportionate improvement in model fit relative to a null model. So we might say that based on McFadden's, we um, we uh, say that the full model containing our predictors represents a 5.83 percent improvement in fit relative to the null model. Next, let's start taking a look at the regression table. So uh, as I noted before, since we assigned the not a threat category, which was coded zero on the DV, to be our baseline category, there's no, there are no coefficients or tests that are provided for this level. Now the next section allows us to determine which of the independent variables significantly predict whether a person falls into the minor threat category versus the not a threat category. So the minor threat category is referred to as the comparison group and the not a threat category is again our baseline outcome or baseline category. Okay, so the first two predictors that we are going to look at are the COVID made up uh, predictor and the female ID uh, predictor. So we see that the regression slope for COVID made up is negative and statistically significant. And this result suggests that persons believing more strongly that news concerning COVID-19 is made up are at lower risk of believing the disease is a minor threat and are at a greater risk of believing that it is not a threat. And this is in comparison to persons who believe less that news concerning the disease is made up. 
The female ID predictor is positive and sig significant as well. And um, basically this indicates that females are at a greater risk of believing the disease to be a minor threat and at a lower risk of believing it is not a threat in compares, uh, as compared to males. Next we see the education level predictor is positive and significant and this result indicates that persons with more education are at a greater risk of believing COVID-19 is a minor threat relative to not a threat um, than those with less education. Now since our age cat variable was treated as a categorical uh, variable in our model, each category shown represents a dummy variable comparing an older category versus the youngest category. So although the slopes for all three dummy variables were positive, only the last dummy variable was statistically significant. So this result indicates that persons age 65 plus are predicted to be at greater risk of falling into the minor threat group and at lower risk of falling into the not a threat group and uh, as compared to persons who are aged 18 to 29. So the next section allows us to determine which of the independent variables significantly predict the risk of a person belonging to the major threat category versus the no threat category. So as before the COVID uh, made up predictor is negative and significant uh, indicating that persons holding greater belief that news and information regarding the diseases made up are at lower risk of believing COVID-19 is a major threat and at greater risk of believing it is not a threat. The female uh, ID predictor is positive and significant again as well and so this positive slope suggests that females are at greater risk of viewing the disease as a major threat and at lower risk of viewing the disease as not a threat. So unlike our first comparison, the education level predictor is negative and significant. So this suggests that persons with more education are at lower risk of believing COVID-19 is a major threat and at greater risk of believing it is not a threat. And then as before, um, our age cat uh, predictors, uh, our dummy coded predictor variables, all the slopes are positive, but only the uh, last one is statistically significant. So that's the slope for the 65 plus. So this result indicates that persons age 65 plus are predicted to be at greater risk of falling into the minor threat group and at lower risk of falling into the not a threat group. This in comparison to persons aged 18 to 29. Now we can also examine the relationship between our predictor variables and category membership uh, by generating relative risk ratios. So the way that we can do this in Stata is uh, when we run our analysis, what we can do is go under reporting right here and select report relative risk ratios. So when we uh, press the OK button, you can see that now we have a column that contains that's headed with RRR and that's for relative risk ratios. Uh, if we look at our uh, uh, the syntax related to this, this is all the same as what we had before, but now we have RRR included, and that generates the relative risk ratio. So just to uh, show you really quickly, I'll just uh, go ahead and copy this and paste it into the command line so that you can see it a little bit better, and then hit uh, OK or Enter, and then you can see we get the same results uh, as we would have uh, through the standard menu option. Okay, so keep in mind that a relative risk involves a comparison of two groups in terms of the risk or likelihood of given outcome. So in the context of logistic regression, we compute the relative risk as a ratio of the probability or risk of a case falling into a comparison group to the probability or risk of the case belonging to the baseline group. So the relative risk ratio that you see in this output represents the predicted multiplicative change in the relative risk uh, per unit increase on an independent variable. So in general, if, an, if a relative risk ratio is greater than one, then this indicates that with increasing values on the IV, uh, there is an increased risk of a case falling into the comparison category and decreased risk of falling into the baseline category. If the relative risk ratio is less than one, then this indicates that with increasing values on the uh, independent variable, there is decreased risk of a case falling into the comparison group and an increased risk that the case falls into the baseline category. And if the relative risk ratio equals one, then that effectively means that there's no relationship between the IV and the risk of falling into the comparison 
comparison group uh, or the baseline group. Uh, also keep in mind that um, if the relative risk ratio is equal to 1, that actually corresponds to a regression slope that's equal to 0. If the, if the relative risk ratio that you see in this table is greater than 1, that actually corresponds to a regression slope that's uh, greater than 0. And if uh, the relative risk ratio is less than 1, then that actually corresponds to a regression slope that's less than 0. So starting off with our relative risk ratio for the COVID made up variable, um, basically uh, that, uh, that value was 0.731. And what that essentially means is that for each one unit increase on the COVID made up uh, variable, the risk of falling into the minor threat category relative to the risk of belonging to the not a threat category is predicted to change by a factor of 0.732. So this effectively means that individuals with greater belief that news and information on COVID-19 is made up are at lower risk of falling into the minor threat category and at increased risk of being in the not a threat category. The relative risk ratio for female ID indicates that the relative risk for persons identified as female is 1.432 times that of males. So this means that females are at greater risk of falling into the minor threat category and at a lower risk of belonging to the not a threat category. So the relative risk ratio for education level indicates that for each one unit increase on education level, the relative risk of being in the minor threat category changes by a factor of 1.254. So that again means that as education level increases, the risk of falling into the minor threat group is predicted to increase, while the risk of falling into the not a threat group is expected to decrease. You see here that uh, each dummy variable representing the comparison between a later age category and the 18 to 29 year old category, uh, all of those relative risk ratios are greater than one, uh, signaling that with the increasing age relative to the 18 to 29 year old category, uh, those individuals at uh, at a greater age or falling in the older age categories are more likely to uh, view COVID-19 as a minor threat and less likely to view it as a as not being a threat. Now in terms of the comparison between the major threat category and the not a threat category we again see that the odds ratio for COVID made up is less than one and the odds ratio, excuse me, the relative risk ratio for uh, COVID made up is less than one and the relative risk ratio for female ID is greater than one. So again, this is signaling that individuals um, who believe more that uh, COVID-19 news and information is made up, those individuals are at less risk of indicating that the disease is a major threat and at greater risk of believing that it is not a threat. Uh, for the female ID um, variable, the relative risk ratio indicates that females were more likely to view COVID-19 as a major threat and less likely to view it as uh, not being a threat. For the education level uh, uh, predictor or independent variable, the relative risk ratio is less than one and this means that with increasing education, the risk that a person believes COVID-19 is a major personal uh, threat or a health threat is decreasing, whereas the risk of believing the disease is not a threat is, incre is increasing. And as before, we saw with the uh, age category dummy variables, um, all of those re relative risk ratios are greater than one, signaling that individuals in the older age categories were more likely to um, perceive uh, COVID-19 as being a major threat and less likely to view it as not being a threat. Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this demonstration. Again, I encourage you to download the PowerPoint. Um, I kind of went through this pretty quickly, but uh, there's a lot more information in the PowerPoint uh, that I've really covered in this video. Um, and I uh, just want to let you know that I appreciate you watching. And uh, I really hope that everyone makes it through this crisis safe and sound. So again, thanks for watching. Y'all take care.